Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the huddle. I'm Vahe Gregorian, Blair Kirkhoff on my left, Sam Mellinger on my right. Um, we're smack dab in the middle of the NCAA tournament. Um, I was lucky enough to be in Cleveland for the Notre Dame-Kentucky game on Saturday, and we were chatting about this a little bit before, but um, Sam, you were out watching with friends and it became the all-consuming thing there, and and I just wonder how you guys would have viewed that game had had Kentucky lost. Had, Jay Billis had a uh, little remark, and I really respect Jay, but he had a remark that it wouldn't have been a shock. But I would contend if, if Notre Dame went ahead and won that game, that, that's that's in your top ten modern upset pantheon. Yeah, no doubt. I, I think I would have felt the way I did after UNLV lost to Duke in 91. That was the unbeatable Larry Johnson running Rebels team uh, undefeated, and of course Duke and Christian Leitner and Bobby Hurley beat them. And that was I still remember. I was I was there, and I just remember thinking this is unbelievable that Duke won this game. I think I'd have felt might even have been a bigger upset if Notre Dame had beaten Kentucky. And I thought Notre Dame played fantastic. Just, yeah. Uh, did some things uh, against Kentucky that I hadn't seen teams do, especially score at the basket. And but they missed some free throws yeah. down the stretch. Yep. And I, I just thought Kentucky, for for everything else it is, played with a little more poise d- down the stretch. And, it, and I was struck by that too. One thing we were talking about is like I, I don't have any inherent dislike of Kentucky. I mean, they're, here they are, the the monster over the game. But um, good for the game for them to win and win this all and not good for the game what what, what does that I mean I don't know where I fall down on that but I, I do think that I would have been disappointed if Kentucky rolled through the entire tournament and beat everybody like they beat West Virginia that would have felt like I don't know I, I wanted to see them challenged I wanted to see them up against it like they were in that Notre Dame game and you mentioned the at the basket August was unbelievable yeah, yeah. my yeah. goodness so I, just, I wanted to see them challenged like that and and I think they're going to get another one against Wisconsin um, and and I don't think Wisconsin I think Wisconsin has you know sort of a puncher's chance like if they played five times Wisconsin might win one or two of those games you know uh, but it was just it's good to see that Kentucky team just get challenged a little bit and get pushed instead of just being able to overwhelm everybody well I like I, like it, it is a rematch I mean these teams yeah, played, yeah. They played the semifinal last year and, and West, Wisconsin had a lead until mm-hmm. Harrison hit a three with about six seconds to go but I, I agree with that. I like how it's lining up for Kentucky. If they're going to win the national championship and be the most perfect team ever, they're going to have to go through. They went through a tough Notre Dame team. They're going to have to beat a top seed in Wisconsin, and it looks like Duke. Mm-hmm. So it's not like they're playing six and seven seeds yeah. to get right, this. They're going to have right. to play the best, what we think is the, the best of the rest in college basketball. That was a really good game last year, Kentucky and Wisconsin. It was fantastic. And I think both teams are better this year. Kentucky certainly is, and I think Wisconsin's probably Wisconsin better. missed a free throw yeah. at the end of the game. They made all their free throws, and they missed one key one at the end of the uh-huh. game. And I remember, if you're going to beat Kentucky, you better not do anything wrong in the last few minutes. And that's what Notre Dame, they played a terrific game. Well, they played a terrific 35 minutes, and then they sort of, they made some mistakes down the stretch. Um, you know, they could have doubled Carl Anthony Towns once or twice, right? <laughs> right, I mean, right. just yeah. like... Pretty easy. two points, you know what I mean? Like, it was disappointing yeah, they didn't have a, like a they really didn't have a play for six seconds left either. I, yeah. I don't I, I don't know what what yeah, happened there. Six Something is broke enough. down. Six is but, enough to, yeah. to get a decent shot. Yeah, I absolutely. thought and, it and, is. And it didn't happen. It's sort of switching gears a little bit. We're, we're already in the middle of free agent signing period in college basketball, where <laughs> where all these guys are announcing transfers or uh, being dismissed at, or whatever it is we we see that's happening to force this movement. But now we're we're kind of already into the coaching carousel and. And I think there's a couple fast-paced movements happening here. And uh, the, maybe the one closest to home, first of all, is actually Rick Barnes. And then, then questions about Greg Marshall. But were, did you not feel that Rick Barnes was safe as of about a week or two ago? And was this a surprise in the end? Um, I did feel he was safe. And, and more to the point, he thought he was safe. Yeah. He was right. told that he was safe. And, and then something – then he was – I think then he was told, you're going to have to make some changes on your staff. And right. Rick Barnes said – I wasn't going to do it, and so he – I think he took the high road out. Yeah. And, uh, and it's an end of an era. I was there for 17 years, longest tenure coach in the Big 12, more wins of anybody that's ever coached in the Big 12, mm. and um, won three conference championships. I think he did a very good job, I, but I don't, I don't disagree that it's time to make a change there. Just uh, a little stale. Yeah, a little stale. Yeah. Since, yeah. since 2008, they haven't been to the Elite Eight uh, right. or for the second weekend since right. 2008, and that's a little too long for Texas. I, we can only probably be guessing about how this is all going to play out, but I, I do think I, I could see a scenario where 
Rick Barnes is a really good fit at Tennessee. I believe his wife went there. He's, he's from uh, Hickory, North Carolina, not too far. What, what do you guys think this is going to mean with Greg Marshall? Is, is Texas the kind of job that, that he goes to if it's the right money? I think it, it, I think it would be. Um, and there, there's a couple things at play here. Like, one, it's a, such a different culture when, when you're the man at Wichita State and then you go to Texas and, right. you know, you're fourth. You're behind, you know, football, spring football and football recruiting. And, you know, and, and, and there's a lot more people to please. I feel like at Wichita he can kind of do his own thing and, you know, scoreboard, and that's enough. But at Texas there's going to be people he's got to make happy and stuff like that. All that said, um, they're going to give him a lot of money if, if that's what he wants. And I just I, – I think it's such a good job, Texas. You've got a good recruiting base. You've got a, 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 a good school to recruit to. Austin's a great town. Um, you know, you, you have a lot of things working in your favor, including – I really believe that you have the possibilities of, of winning a national championship, but it's not like at Kentucky or Kansas right. or North Carolina where that fire burns so hot. Like, and you, you know, they, they kept Rick Barnes around for 17 years, and he did a good job, but he wouldn't have stayed around 17 years with those results at, yeah, you know, yeah. at Kentucky. Or That's whatever. right. Uh, the other thing, I think, is that if Texas offers him if, – if you're Greg Marshall and you don't go to Texas, I don't know what job you're waiting for. You know, that, that would be a sign that maybe he is Mark Few. At yeah, Wichita. unless it's a, a Duke, a, unless the, it's the a blue blood, a blue blood yeah. a Carolina, right. UCLA, which I could see with him. But I, but I think, I think he will examine that kind of money carefully. And and uh, it, there's there's a lot. I mean, he's not rebuilding at Texas. That's the thing. I think no, it's that's also right. there. But as we we should point out as we as we tape this, uh, Bill Battle, the Alabama athletic director, is in Wichita. Yep. And so right. Alabama's uh, they've made no. Did, have not hid the seat that, that yeah. they want uh, Greg Marshall yeah. as their coach. Now, I think Texas is Alabama only better. Yeah. You know, it's, it's football or obviously football oriented, and um, you you would be absolutely second banana there at, at, at Alabama as you would be at Texas. But Texas is the richest athletic program. Austin's an incredible place to live. I do think that if if Texas offers Greg Marshall, I, I think he'd take it. Yeah, I, I, that's my hunch too. Um, well, we're we're getting a little long in the long in the tooth for one thing, but long on the show here. But uh, um, one last thing: we're a week away from opening day, and after all, Kansas City is a baseball town. Uh, we were reminded last year. Um, how much different do we feel like it's going to be Monday than than it was a year ago? I mean, a year ago, I think there was a lot of hope. Now there's you know, some evidence. Yeah, I think last year it was hope, and this year it's more. Uh, history right like I mean, right. they did it and so now it's you know can they follow it up I mean you know last year they were coming off 86 um, you know the first winning season since the the great fluke of 2003 uh, <laughs> but they but they still have you know like they've done it this year and the, the, I don't know how many people but there's gonna be 40,000 people that game and I don't know maybe half of them went to a game at some point in October uh, and, and felt that electricity it'll just be a very different you know they're gonna have the ring ceremony I would assume, you know, there's going to be a flag yeah. going in, in left field. It's just, I mean, it's something that, you know, we haven't seen in a generation. I don't know how many times we, we've said or yeah. written those words, but uh, it's absolutely true. It'll be fun. And Any thoughts on opening day, Blair? Well, just that the, uh, I, I do like that the starting pitchers uh, seem to be throwing well right now. Yeah. After a little stretch yeah. in March where the, the, the ERAs were up, the runs were up, uh, everybody who is lined up to be in the rotation is throwing the ball better right now. I think that's a good sign. It is different, like you said. The flags, the rings that we have. When, when nobody alive has seen is that what, is that what they used to do you know, on opening day? I don't remember. Nobody we knows. That's, that's a good story idea. We should look at 1986. What a yeah. what they did on opening day there. Do they have any of this stuff? Um, all right, we should bring it in. Uh, huddle up, everybody up. Um, thanks for joining us. We'll be back next week. Either two of us, or three of us, or one of us. And uh, thanks again.